Hi, I'm Sarah Pov, the multimedia storyteller, and I'm here to paint another painting with you today. We're going to paint a painting in about an hour, and I have a new winter outfit, so you know what we're going to paint. We're going to paint about winter. I don't know about you, but it's getting pretty cold out there. I'm ready for that nice cup of hot chocolate with all those bouncing marshmallows in it. And my new outfit, I'm ready for the first winter party. All right, well, let's get started with that painting. All right, you see that I have three snowmen. You might want to consider snowmen for the amount of people you have in your family. That's a, a fun option. Uh, this was, is one that, you know, children can create. You see a, a little bit of an easier, bigger version there uh, without as many details. So we'll get as much of this done as we possibly can in that hour. Now this time I've decided to um, do a canvas board instead of uh, a full canvas like I did on this one, and this one is a board that I picked up along the way. So you can paint on that. You can also put, you know, watercolor. I, I sometimes paint heavy on watercolor. Uh, some of you may have heard me talk about that before if you watched others. Hey, watch uh, some of my other videos. You'll probably enjoy those uh, if you enjoy my style of how I create my paintings. I try to do a simple something that a non-artist can, uh, can create with. I, um, I want all people to think that they can, can paint. You know, it, it's, uh, it's about having fun, about create, be, be being creative. Here's our hat for we, we can have a sample a little later on a, a snowman hat. So we want to get started with the tan, the tan background. That's what we want to get started with. We want to kind of have where our snowmen are going to be. We're going to get that tan going. Uh, I have my hair dryer back here because I might want to dry that real quick. Now, I don't really like buy a lot of colors. I buy those basics and I buy for the most part, I buy craft, craft paint. Um, there's no, I mean, if you want to buy the other colors, go for it. But I just don't like to have that much on hand. And I do a lot of classes with people. And so therefore, I, I'm partly teaching them to mix. Now, I do go ahead and buy a lot of times the green and the orange and the brown. Uh, I use a lot of those. So it, it speeds up me on time. So they call some of this back painting. And so that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing some back painting. All right. Two, you can make snowballs if you want for your snowman or on these it has what I did is I did heads and then I did just a big one like this. It just kind of speeds it up on us being able to paint. It's still the same concept all right, so that's what we're going to go for first. I'm going to have a line about right here's where my snow is going to be at the bottom and the tan at the top, but I didn't really want to paint this tan. Okay, so I'm going to mix my brown and my white to get that tan. Oh, you wanted to bring the darker color of the two you're mixing together to the lighter color and just a little bit. Some people use a lot of paint when they do something like this because they try to mix it all. They try to mix it all. I'm going to add just a tad of yellow. Oh, I think that's getting me where I want to go. That's getting me there. And sometimes you have to practice that uh, the eye of knowing what colors to put together. There's color charts out there that can help you with that. Okay. Now I'm going to use my big brush for way up here so I can go fast. Household brush. Oh no, looks what happened. I hit that red. Sometimes when you use the big brushes that happens. Okay, I'm going to dip in the water. I don't want a lot of water. I just want to dip.
Okay, I'm going to switch, since I got that red on there especially, I'm going to switch to a different brush. A little smaller. I want a little more yellow in there because I like that, how that yellow blended in. I don't want it to seem like a really dark sky. So I did a brown and the white and a little yellow. Now I'm going to go this way to just quickly get that in and then at the end I'm going to go back and forth because I like it to be the directions that the wind would kind of be blowing. Paint, 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 paint. I sure do like to paint. Paint, 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 paint. I sure do like to paint. You know, it doesn't matter if you are a first time painter. If you are someone who's experienced, we can always learn things from each other about how to get it done. I know I was reading about the back painting. I was like, huh, huh. That's not exactly how the college professor said it, but hey, it makes a lot of sense. And it means that I can speed up. Um, canvas are pretty easy to come by. I just go to the dollar store, um, you know, some kind of cheap, you know, store like that. One of those, one of those kind of stores and watch them for canvas. When we travel around, I stop at different stores along the way that are the, um, you know, have the cheaper items like that and just see what I could find. See what I could find. If you want it, be you know, if you want a better one, if you like the canvas, hey, that's up to you. I, I'm one of those people that doesn't believe there's an exact right or exact wrong with this. I want you to enjoy what you're doing. You're kind of filling in like a color sheet. I'm going to get you the basics here and then you're going to, um, you know, we'll do what we can in an hour and then we'll see where we, where you go from there. And you can always add more. You can always add in, um, making it look rounder. You can, you know, there's lots you can do. I'm, I'm here to help you get the basics in, have a good time doing it. Maybe you want to get together with some friends and have a paint party. So my, uh, skills come from, I taught elementary art. I taught for 37 years. I taught uh, art for uh, 23 years in the Bully Springs School District. And so I always learned to do well, what I could do in 45 minutes with the children. And then uh, they were on to the next class. And then, of course, there's 25 of them in the room, usually. And you had to take that into consideration. So I read this book a long time ago about um, a non-art teacher who was teaching her niece how to draw and having great success. Now she was someone who did art and even sold some of her art, but she had never been to art school. And so she talked about techniques about how to help children and people in general be able to, to paint and draw. So I've just studied over time, read over time, um, you know, gone out there and, and uh, tried to learn more and more and more. That's, that's just what I do. I, um, I want to get better at painting. I want to get better at teaching. And I do those things to help myself out. Now, I always just have, you know, a ton of brushes. I'm not picky about, I've had some people will go like, well, what size? Well, I don't know. I, you know, they have sizes. Some of these, they have sizes on them. I don't pay attention. I let kids use mine when I teach other classes. I keep a few little ones for myself, but pretty much, and I just go touch the brushes and go, oh, which one? Now I will say that this one, the cool thing about this brush is that angle on it, because if you only had a big brush in this, you can still paint in maybe a teeny tiny brush. If you had three that you were gonna do, you could do a big one, a teeny one, and one like this, because you can paint on the edge. And some people have watercolor brushes. Yes, some of those are watercolors. Some of these aren't. Um, I, I just do what I do. And these are the supplies that I have. And I paint on watercolor with them. I paint on um, the canvas with them. Oils, I haven't done in a while. But you could still transfer a lot of these skills, skills into oils. So oil, you might want to keep your brushes a little separate there. All right, let's get those snowmen in so they can start drying for us. Paint, 
paint, paint, paint, paint, paint, paint. I sure do like to paint. Now, see my pencil mark? You, I'm going to paint over it. It almost serves as a little bit of shading there on the edge, especially if we don't paint it very um, thick. And with the craft paint, it doesn't go on very thick. And if you even go over a little bit into the tan area that will help with that. On the ones that I did with the with the school kids, I, a lot of times we'll have them go back and outline. The this one right here, we went back and we outlined with some payons. I did that one with um, all my fourth graders and fifth graders one year at my school. Paint, paint, paint. I sure do like to paint. These could be, you know, something you hang up seasonally in your house. Your, um, you could paint them for your family members. I've done that lots of years where I came up with a project. This would be a, a real easy one to vary it for the number of people that you have in your family. It's also fun to think about the people within that family that you are painting it for. You know, does somebody like to wear hats? Does somebody have a favorite color? And just give it a little touch of what those people like. And you would be surprised how quickly th that they will go, oh, well, that might be me. I like those colors. I do some paintings uh, for, for uh, Christmas presents, but also for like graduation, mothers, when someone's um, close to Mother's Day, I do some of those kind of things to give as gifts. And it just takes a little bit for them to then go, oh, I think that's me. And it's something that you know, once you do, what, what I learned a long time ago is you, once you get something created, it's easier to recreate it again. Um, even like if you wanted stencils, if you didn't want to just draw this, if you, you know, had a little, wanted to hurry it up, you could draw around those. If you didn't practice, you know, hadn't been practiced enough and you wanted to be able to create those again. Um, people who paint, who create, they a lot of times, well, I guess maybe not as much now, but in the old days, they had files and files of all kinds of pictures. Uh, sli I've seen uh, accounts where they, you know, the artist would have slides, a lot of slides they had taken of different things so that when they were actually creating, they were looking back at some vision of something they had seen or that someone else had taken for them and given them. Um, I went to um, the Nelson Art Gallery one time here in Kansas City, and the um, hall was just filled with Thomas Hart Benton's drawings. And as I looked at those, I went, oh, oh, those are the people in his paintings. And I thought, huh, huh. And sure enough, you know, next time I went to see some of his paintings, I went, Oh, he, he drew those people along the way as he met people in real life. And then he would uh, paint those in his murals. So that's, you know, that's something to think about. All right, let's see if I can get a bigger brush here and we'll go across. Like I said, I don't rinse them out right now. I just lay them to the side. No, I think I'm going to just put some white paint on here.
So what is your favorite thing to eat in the winter time? Especially like close to Christmas, do you like pecan pie? Do you like pumpkin pie? Do you like pumpkin bread? When I think of winter, I think of all those smells from my mother's house. Mmm, so yummy, so yummy. Now I think I'm gonna quickly, since I've got a lot of paint on here, I'm gonna quickly just give those snowmen another coat. That um, acrylic seems a little thinner than sometimes, which that happens, that happens. And then here, just in a second, I'm going to get down and get my, uh, reach down and get my blow dryer. And so you'll hear some noise. I'm gonna to try to dry it up so I can work on some of the next steps. Uh, it may not be totally dry, but uh, the, the thing is to dry it enough that we can uh, go on and work on another section while that other, the snow is drying. All right, here we go. I'm getting my blow dryer. Get ready for the noise. Okay, I believe that I have the tan dry. I don't have the white. I'm gonna turn my painting upside down to work now because I want to utilize the fact that this is dry. So I want you to look at the fence. The fence comes across there. It brings a little unity to the painting. It brings a little unity to the painting. And so that's what we're gonna to try to do now. All right, now I'm gonna pick a flatter brush for this, one that's about the size that I want that fence. If you like to measure, go for it. You can take a, you know, you can take a ruler or something else and measure across. I usually just go for it. Now I'm gonna turn it this way and I'm going to dip my paintbrush in the brown, get quite a bit of brown on there. And I want to just go. I don't want to like stop, stop, stop. I want to go till it runs out of paint. Then I'll, of course I'll have to stop, but I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to like kind of, let's see if I measure like this much. Looking for my pencil that I drew with a while ago. Oh well, here, let's, we're going to do like this. Okay, and then we'll come over here and we'll do like that. So now I'm just gonna try to aim for those, make it as straight as I can. The, the college professor always said, you know, make them think you're, you, that's what it is. So we're just gonna go for it. He'd say like, you know, you don't have to do all the breaks in the building, just do a few. They'll know, they'll know what it is. And I'm just trying to make the, across there for right now and then I can come back and I'll paint it a little bit heavier. Now one of the other tricks that I'm doing is I'm dragging this little pinky on the actual painting and then just moving these three fingers. I'm just moving those three fingers because that helps stabilize where I'm painting. See, I've got that little pinky out there. Now I'm just moving like this. And of course, you've got the luxury of, with this being on a video, you've got the luxury of stopping it 
you know, going and measuring if you want and then coming back to it. And that's not really a luxury that, that I have right now. Okay. Okay, so that gives you just a little bit of guidelines without having to measure a lot. And I do turn it sideways just because I'm a little better at painting that if it is sideways like that. Now something I've also learned over time is if you want to, you could come back. Of course you can come back with a brush, a small brush, and, and do it, but that takes a really long time to do. What I oftentimes do is I oftentimes come back and do a Sharpie. You could do a brown Sharpie or you could do a black Sharpie if you wanted to make it look a lot more like wood. Now I'm doing it from this direction because remember this is dry, this is not dry. So that's why I've got my painting like it is. And I'm gonna just set my standards in that fence, just set them there, just barely into the snow. And let's see, I guess for those people who like a little bit of how much, uh, you see how I measure, just about this much. Let's do about the, um, here. Okay. So then we're going to come over here. We're going to do about here. And we'll do about here. So maybe that kind of hits people that like some measurement and people who are more like me, just they make it free happen. All right. So now I'm going to go from here, and I'm doing the same thing. I need a little more room. All right. And I'm not very good at talking when I'm trying to make it straight. Now I know you're really not supposed to make that brush touch the middle of your, the bristles touch the middle, you know, go all the way down in the middle, touch that canvas, pushing those bristles all the way down. But on something like this, it helps. And I don't buy really expensive brushes. And like I've told you, I teach classes and people use them, so I just kind of do it. I'm sure there's some people out here who have really nice brushes and, you know, they take really good care of them. Um, I'm glad for you. Good job. And I think the availability of supplies because of the amount of craft stores we have these days, because I know when I was a little girl there weren't any around. Um, I didn't live close to a city, so we really didn't have access to too much. I lived three hours from St. Louis and three hours from Memphis, so I was just kind of out there in, in no man's land on being able to shop much in an area that had more. All right, there's my fence. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Now, next thing I wanna do, just set my brush to the side. I don't really have time to clean it right now because I wanna be able to go on to the next part and get some of these details in for you. Um, I'm going to get out my blow dryer because I'm gonna need to work on some snowmen.
Now you can see that this is maybe not as even as you might wish, but we're going to be putting um, scarves and hats and those things on. Uh, you can shore that back up if you want, or you can leave it like that. I, I probably will on the fence later go back and do some of the outlining with the Sharpie to make it look more like wood. I, I don't know. I just like doing that. Um, we might do that today. It just depends on how our hour goes, but that's what I do a lot of times. Uh, it might, some people might consider it a mixed media if you add other things in. However, it's yours. It's your painting. You do it like you like. I think I'm going to just take this one up and that's going to be where that birdhouse is. I'm going to turn it upside down so I can make it a little straighter here. I think I'll make it a little wider so it will look like it can support a birdhouse. I like watching those cardinals in the winter looking out. That was one of our fun things as a child is being able to look out, watch it snow, watch the uh, animals, we had a big patio door. My parents were teachers, so sometimes the whole family got to stay home. It was so exciting. So exciting when no one in the community pulls your mother and dad's strings. They, somebody was always wanting something from my parents. And my children, of course, with me teaching, my children went through the same thing. My daughter went to college um, a couple hours from where she grew up, and it was it was funny. She went to interview at a at a job over there while she was in college, waiting tables. And she found out. She she called me. She's like, "Mom, I can't even get away from you. I can't even get away from you at college." The manager of the place, he yes, he hired me, but he said, oh, well, I bet you're Mrs. Poff's daughter. <laughs> I taught his, his children. Life is interesting that way. Okay, let's make it a little taller. If you have a certain kind of birdhouse you like to attract certain kinds of birds, you know, study about that. Uh, I, I think that's great. I think that's great. I'm just making the basics here so that it's easy for people to follow. Um, more detail is, is great. Okay, we'll get that in so it can start drying. Okay, here we go. All right. Now, hmm, the hats, the scarves, the snowman decoration. Let's go for that. I think I will start with red. My family likes red a lot. Three members out of the four, their favorite color is red. I'm gonna come over just over that fence a little bit, so therefore it makes that line look like it's shored up. Like a little ball here, like it's tied there. And then I'm going to come down. Come down again. Okay. We may have to be boring on the scarves. Okay, so now I touch that brown. I think I better turn this upside down and see if I can do it from here because I want to keep working. I don't want to stop. That's how you get these done is making sure you have a section dry, a section that's not quite dry is you know working on that drying part and you just look for what's dry enough to keep going. Aha, see, I got that fence in there too. Did you see how I tricked into that? Just watching for where to do that. OK, 
Okay. Now let's, because we want some variety, let's make the scarf go the other way this time. And yes, we're a boring family. We all like red. Except for the son, but he was gone six years before the daughter. Uh, really started getting into enjoying her color, what colors she liked. All right. See, that this is that paintbrush I was telling you about that just, you know, has that little edge. And sometimes it just works real nice like that. And then sometimes like that, I need to go back and get me a smaller brush. Okay, there we go. But you do, uh, especially using those colors, we, we need to make sure we keep those brushes out of the way because we don't want to grab that red when we don't really want the red. All right, I think I'm going to go for the hats next because if we didn't get a, something finished, it would be better to leave off some of the other items than that. We'll see how much we can get done here. So we're going to go for a hat. Um, this one, we're going to try that top hat, like old Frosty. Frosty the Snowman. I still like that movie. And I still want this upside down because this is wet. So I'm going to try to do that. Now the basic shapes are going to be that, you know, we've got a circle, but it's making an ellipse. And then we've got this cylinder kind of shape there. All right, another brush. Always looking for another brush because I don't want to stop to wash those brushes out. We want to just keep painting. And sometimes I have to do that just to make sure that they're working good. I'm gonna, I wanted to make sure that it looks like it's on his head. Now, I thought about a, a pipe. Sometimes people don't want to do that these days because we talk about, we know more of the dangers of smoking than we used to, and we don't want to include those things. Uh, that's an option. I won't include it today, but that's a, certainly an option that's, you know, historical from the Frosty the Snowman. And here again, I'm just kind of blocking in the basic shape. And then if we have time, we can see if we can make that a little bit more of the rounded kind of shape. If we don't have time, it'll have the basics there for you. All right. I'm going to turn this around so I can see. Now this one looks a little different than the one I drew here. you know, up to you. I, I think I might like to have a feather after it dries. That would be a fun one for a feather. Now, I'm going to think about, like, since this one's representing me, hmm, what kind of hat do I like? I like lots of hats. That's the problem. I'm a hat lady. You'll notice in my videos there's a hat of some kind every every time. All right, now I'm going to turn it around. There again, I want to make sure that I get the head covered. And I set this, I have a piano in, in the edge of my kitchen, and I set this on the piano someplace, or someplace where in other houses, I've said other places, where I'm walking back and forth and I look at them over time and sometimes just a few little strokes here or there uh, to add to it or maybe just even to uh, take that, that Sharpie or I've done pencil on them. I've done colored pencil. Um, the oil pastels could work and just add it a little bit more and that seems to help. Now 
Now see there again, technically when I was in college, they talked about not, you know, not doing any of that. You take and you could mix your green with the red because green's the complementary color. And you want to do that instead of black because it, um, black makes a harsher tone when you want to, oh here, let me show you. If you wanted to outline with paint, so if you take the a little bit of green and you mix it right like that, can you see that it starts to get a little darker? So if you wanted to like outline like right here, And then we take your other brush that has that red in it and then just kind of blend it down some. That starts to give you some of the dimension and you can see it starts to spread too. And then you can add a little white in there too if you want to. All right, so the daughter, she really likes to she likes to mimic me when she's uh, dressing up. So she likes polka dots a lot too though. Huh, I think I might do that. I might give her a hat like mine, but it's going to have polka dots on it. So let's do a red hat with polka dots. See that time I picked up more of a watercolor brush. Kind of have to work a little harder at getting it to cover in this kind of case. And I've been known to do what I call heavy on watercolor, which means I don't follow the traditional rules of it being very, you know, transparent in nature. I just take the watercolors and I simply do something kind of like this. A lot of the folk art I paint, that's, that's my art of choice when I'm painting for myself is folk art. And that's what I do in my folk art is I call it heavy on. These days we don't worry quite as much about the art the art rules of the old times when we're doing a, a class like this. All right, there we go. Now, we're gonna get those basics of that snowman in and then we'll see how much time we have for some of the other things. And we also want a couple little birds up here. Looks like I should shore up my bird house a bit right here. painting from a standing position for the video and so it takes a little more thinking to get it done you know concentration and and holding the hand still let's try that since I know what's black let's So now I want to find that red brush and I want to get just a little bit of, hey, there's a little black mark. We're going to make the bird there. So I'm just going to get, look at my cardinal. I do have a cardinal here. I'm just going to look a little bit at my cardinal shape and get something started. Okay, I want the stiffer brush for this. So when you do this, that the one book I was telling you about that um, the non-artist taught her uh, niece how to paint and how to draw, she talked a lot about 
looking for the shapes, looking for the common shapes within your life that make up that bird, that person, whatever it is that you are trying to, to draw or paint. And um, I think about that often. You know, break it down. Break it down into shapes. All it is is a bunch of shapes put together. Just a bunch of shapes. Okay, we'll let those dry and then we'll come back to them. Oh, we're doing pretty good. Doing pretty good on time. Okay, I'm going to see about some of these details. I'm going to go for the traditional kind of eyes just because they're fairly easy. Now, if you happen to do this with um, some children, this is to me hard for them um, because they get it they want to make it way big, then they don't like it, and then they end up messing up. Of course, the, the good thing is, this is acrylic, you can paint over it. But with it being black, sometimes it's harder. It's harder to paint over it. You have to do it several times for it to go away. So I try to find a brush that you can just simply print down print down with it. Just touch. Touch is what you're trying to do. Now let's get the nose on there before we get the, the mouth. Of course there's a jillion ways you could do uh, the eyes, nose, and mouth. And you're welcome to, you know, choose your way. There's not a right way or a wrong way. There's just a way that you like best. I have to tell you a funny little story. I used to think when I was a little girl, I used to think snowman, there was something magic about snowman because we would build one and then he would melt down and his scarf, his hat would be gone. The next morning we'd get up and his hat and scarf would be gone and I, I didn't know what had happened. Well, years later, I asked my mother about it, and she said, well, when you all were asleep, I'd go out there and get it and bring it in the house. <laughs> but it was a long time before I ever caught on to that. You know, we sometimes have those little memories from when we're young. We're just trying to qualify life and what's going on. I have a young granddaughter right now, and she... Uh, she has some of that going on. I guess he's turning his head to look at the family. You can give him a little character. All right, now we're going to do some buttons. Same kind of thing. And this is something that you could practice ahead of time. Practice on a piece of paper or a paper towel to the side before you do it because if you can get it right the first time, it helps. Yes, my scarf is finished. So my school colors and my husband's school colors were the same. Now, we did not go to the same school, but they were red and black. So I wonder if that's part of the reason we both like those colors.
So you could also put uh, whatever the decor is in the room that um, you're going to hang this in. Or maybe if you're giving it as a present, whatever room they're, you think they might hang it in. It's pretty dry. Another thing you can do is you could change it to a blue sky, a blue sky with um, a lot of um, lighter blue, maybe even a tinge of yellow might be good. You could make a gray one if you want it to look like there's a snowstorm coming. To me, the most fun is when the sun starts to come out after this after we've had a snow and you can get out and it's just the right kind of snow to make a snowman. Ah, even as a grandmother, I still like to do that. I used to be known for making um, snow creatures in my neighborhood. That art comes out in all kinds of ways. I do like my folk art and the painting, but the best thing is sculpture. But sculpture is just harder to do on a personal level when you don't have a place to practice it. I think he needs muffs. I had a few muffs on here. Ear muffs be good for that snowman. This comes very in very handy to just have those brushes sitting there. A lot of times I will do that you know, for a whole big painting session and then clean them up. Unless the painting session goes real long and then sometimes I need to go and do something different. I think we're going to just, we're going to do dots. So it's really interesting sometimes. My daughter's grown up now. Son is too, of course. And she came to the house the other day. <laughs> and she had on, we like to wear a lot of black and white and red and red and black and then the dots. And I had on my black pants and my dots on them, and she did too. Get a little white, and I'm going to like paint a little more here because this part is going to show, and I want that to look a little more rounded. See, the that was something that the art professor did talk a lot about is standing up away from your painting. You know, put your painting somewhere, like me talking about it on the piano. Put your painting somewhere, stand away from it, and you can see. Like right now, I see what I didn't see earlier on that hat. I can see the snowman, the, the white of the snowman sticking out. And if I want it to look like it's covering, I need to, to come back in with that. I think it would be fun, uh, let's see, to put some fringe on the top. Sometimes those little hats for the daughter, sometimes those little hats have fringe. So I'm going to take, this one is a little on the messed up side brush, but I'm just going to take and I'm going to do it here first. 
and then I'm going to do like this. Ha ha ha. Yes, <laughs> you know, sometimes those experiments, see, too much came out. Too much came out. I think I might go back in with my tan real quick here. We'll come back and patch it up a little bit more here in a minute. Yeah, some experiments don't work. Okay, now I do have a basket in the hand. I also have um, a broom, a bird nest. We want to make sure we get to the birds. Let's see about those birds. For it to be a cardinal, we need a little bit of black area here. Let's see if we can get just a little bit of black. Turn it over. It does help to have a little bit of something to look at. You don't have to have all the details right. You just have to have a little bit of something to look at. Okay, so now I'm going to think about what else I might want to put on him, her. I guess these would be helms because the helms are darker in color as I recall. touched my water. Remember, I don't use a lot of water because I'm using craft paint and that makes it go on quicker and easier. And then you could do what we were talking about doing the shading by adding just a little bit of the green Looking for my little bitty brush. Here it is. See what color's on it. So this time I'm going to go back to where I added just a little bit of green into that red. And I'm going to draw just a little bit of that. What you could do on the birds, too, is to draw you one and then um, trace it. Get tracing paper and uh, put it on there and trace it. That way, once you've drawn it, you know, you know what it looks like and you like it. That's, that's a trick that um, artists use. Um, there's... There's all kinds of things like they, that that they do that we don't even think about. They also paint a painting multiple times. Um, when I visited some of the studios of famous artists, I was surprised. I thought, well, they were good. They just did it. Well, they practiced a lot. Just like anything else in life, you know, you practice a lot and you get better at it. And I have realized that about myself. It, it is, it's true. Now, is there some talent? Yes, but there's a lot of practice that goes into it. There's some people that have talent that don't really practice it a lot, so therefore they don't get that much better at it. Sometimes it's the person who just keeps on trying that wins the best. And what I will probably do with my birds is I will probably outline them um, later because I'm going to want to see the wings a little better. 
Okay, I'm using that red that has a little green in it. And if you really want to practice your painting skills, use the little brush and do that red and that green and, and do the outline. That, um, that's certainly uh, a next step if you're wanting to learn more about painting. See, he's, that little bit helps him. Okay. We're getting close to where we're going to need to shut down on timing. See what else? Let's look at it and see what else I ought to show you. I know I've got that spot where I messed up. But I want you to realize that mess-ups are okay. And you're with acrylic. Now it might take a couple of times to repaint that area. And I, I don't like to like pre-plan a lot when I do this. I like it just to happen as it happens because I want you to know that it happens to me too. It's not just someone who's new. It's not just, you know, you oh, well, I can't do it because I've made a mistake. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. I've made more mistakes than most people in all different kinds of ways. All different kinds of ways. Now if I want to make what I was going to try to make with my paintbrush, I thought I could just take that and print it. I've done it before. It just didn't work out good this time. I might could take a toothpick or something small like that and lay a, you know, just draw little bitty lines, or take a Sharpie, a thin line Sharpie, and just make it look like fringe. All right. Now, one thing I do like to do sometimes when I have a painting like this, and this, we don't want this glitter on the you know, red up there and all, but sometimes I've taken just a pinch, even as it's almost dry. I don't put glue on it because I don't, glue sometimes just makes it way too much. And you can put some up on there if you want. And you'll lose some of it over time, but it'll, a little bit of it will stay. Okay, so now let's look at this. I don't have a bird nest and I don't have a broom or a basket. Those are some details you can add. There's a vest on here if you'd like to add. Uh, we're just about out of time. Um, you, know, you know what? Let's take just a minute. I've got an idea. Because see, my coloring is a little bit different up there now. I'm gonna make a, the bird nest on top of her head. The bird nest is going to be on top of the little girl's head. Okay, I'm going to wipe that brush off. I do a lot of wiping of my brushes before I put them in the water, and that had red on it, so I'm just not going to even worry about it. Okay, so I'm going to do a little nest right here. And I don't know, I don't, you know, this came from um, an idea that I saw a number of years ago and then develop some of it on my own. I'm not sure a bird nest would have um, eggs in it this time of year, but it's kind of fun to put on there. <laughs> Maybe they're like me, they put plastic eggs in there. <laughs> they put plastic eggs. All right, little blue eggs here. You do have to touch your brushes when you do what I do there. You have to touch them to the to the paper or to something. It looks like those eggs are going to need a little more. A little more love there on getting them where we want.
and just kind of kind of add a little bit of yellow and orange to that so that it looks like it's a little bit woven there. Okay. Well, I hope you've had a good time today. You've enjoyed it, and hope, I hope you've had a group of friends together. We have this great MCPL, Mid-Continent Public Library system over in the Jackson County and some of the other counties around in the greater Kansas City area. They do a great job with programming, and I enjoy working with them on programs. All right, let's see, that's about the time. Uh, this is Sarah Poth, the Mold Media Storyteller, and this is our snowman painting. <laughs>